ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, it's a beautiful morning. <laughs> anyway, uh, I am so glad y'all are here. I just don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. We're going to have a discussion. Part of that discussion is going to be some of you realizing something you hadn't realized before, and then some of you realizing something you did realize before, but you ignored. Don't know why you would ignore it, because it is of that great importance. What am I talking about? Well, there are several things. Um, let, let me go ahead and give you not the context of what we're talking about, in the fact that it's coming from scripture, because we're not going to talk in depth about scripture, but we're going to talk about understanding what's going on with currency, understanding what's going on with distraction, understanding what's going on with whether or not you've been lied to about this or that. What do you mean about this or that? This or that could mean anything. Well, what I am talking about, about this or that, we, you're just going to have to listen and you're going to have to see that there is a lot of propaganda out there and there's a lot of things out there that everybody thinks they're right about and they're, <laughs> well, one, it doesn't matter until they're wrong. Not because I said they're wrong. Lord have mercy. I am not the guy who is in control of knowledge. Knowledge is a very powerful thing, people. And once you have it, you have a responsibility to use it. And many people are not using knowledge. Many people are using information. Because don't we live in the information age? Information is not important. Anybody can be informed. Lord have mercy. Anybody can have information. No, 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 no. Knowledge is what they say is power. Information is not power. Why have people allowed themselves to be misled about information? Wait, again, that's not the, the subject matter of the whole conversation. So you're just going to have to trust me that we're headed someplace. And I can only guarantee you that you will learn something of importance, not just something. See, anybody can have information. Man, you turn on the news, you can get information. But, but have you learned anything? The people who go to school, they get information all day long. But do they learn anything? First, in order for you to learn, you have to be interested in the subject. Now, even I didn't have a clear understanding of that until literally last night when I focused on it. Man, I have a whole lot of information in my head, but then I also have knowledge. Not my knowledge. You see, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter how I feel because I don't control knowledge. Knowledge is based on facts. Unrefuted, unrebutted facts. But people with information, they can rebut information all day long. They can argue about information all day long. Everybody's right when it comes to information. Because information is subjective. Okay, whatever subject the person wants to make, they can create two sides to the subject. And everybody can be wrong and right at the same time. Doesn't make sense, does it? Because it's just information. Information is subjective. Information is relative to the person in the conversation being discussed. Doesn't necessarily make it knowledge. Doesn't make necessarily make the information true. But... Everybody can be right with information. Well, 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 well let, me, let me do it this way. And we're going to talk about the word sin only for a second. This is not the subject matter of the conversation. We're just going to talk about the word sin. Every time a person sins, does something contrary to what the scriptures say, does something contrary to what they know is right. What the scriptures say, they, they, it actually says, if a person knows how to do what is right and yet doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. For them, not, not for the God they're supposed to serve, but for them it is a sin. See, if you go against your conscience, that's you sinning against your 
itself. But every sin is compound. There is no sin that stands alone. For instance, in the beginning, Satan, he lied to Eve. And then he compounded that lie by misleading her. You see, the lie wasn't so much the misleading part. The misleading her was to get her to think that there was a possibility that she, a fleshly creature, could be like God, a spiritual creature. Your eyes are bound to be open and you're bound to be like God. And what did Eve do? She committed two sins, not one. First, she was told not to touch the tree or its fruit. So she touched it after looking at it and longing for it. And then she ate it. Compound, two sins, one leading to the other. Then Adam, it says, when with her, he began taking of the fruit. He touched it, and then he began eating. Compound sins. None of us sins solely. One sin always leads to another, and then another and another, depending on the person, depending on the sin. But it's always compound. Now, that, hold on, some of you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Now, that's not the subject matter of this conversation. That's just me using an analogy as far as information and knowledge. Because when you think about what was just said, it makes logical sense. For instance, if a person is getting ready to go rob a bank, well, first, they know robbing a bank is wrong because they're taking something that doesn't belong in it. Doesn't matter how you feel about it. Doesn't matter where you got information about it. It's the subject matter. It's wrong. And a person goes against their conscience because they know it's wrong and they do it anyway. So they're sinning against themselves just by focusing on it and thinking about it. So, hey, but when they go and they carry out that thought, they now compound the problem. This is how the court system was initially set up. This is how the scriptural commandments were initially set up. It was set up for compound sins, not for the, the simple sin where a person just thinks about it. No, 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 where a person thinks about it and then they carry it out. That's what the scriptures mean when it says that sin starts as a seed in the heart and people allow it to grow. And once it becomes fertile, then a person acts upon it. Compound sins. Every sin is compound. Do you understand what's being said here? So if you're going to go out and commit a crime, you compound it by one thing after another thing after another thing. So it's not just a simple crime. That's how the court system gets people. That's why they bring in all these presumptions and all this so-called evidence showing the intent. See, it's not so much the intent. It's a series of events that led to one thing. Now, this is not about talking about how to get out of a situation like that. This is just to show you knowledge as opposed to information. See, once you have that knowledge, now you can better think about your life. Now, wait, 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 wait. It doesn't always mean it has to be negative because that's just knowledge on one side of the spectrum. Let's go to the other side of the spectrum. Let's do positive. I just produced two videos. They were initially supposed to be one, but I hit a button and I made a mistake on the first one by hitting the wrong button, that red button right here. I hit that red button. You ain't supposed to hit that red button. That stops everything. You can't undo that one. And so I decided to continue the video, which you got more information by the continuation of the video because you got an hour and a half more information. Now, what did it do? Well, first of all, it showed you about this thing called credits. Now, Again, it's about carry forward deductions. You, you don't worry about it. A deduction and a credit, don't worry about it. They're both dollar for dollar. But now, in a future video, very future, probably sometime later this week, we are going to talk about collateral. Because dollar for dollar, why can't you take that dollar for dollar? Because pay attention, dollar for dollar is currency in the United States. Because it's dollar for dollar. It's equal to a dollar. So why can't you use that to support something, to back something up, to create something and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this as collateral. For instance, why don't you, Peter, borrow from Paul instead of robbing Paul? What are you talking about? Well, I'm taking my collateral 
and I'm using it to support or back up or collateralize instruments that I created. And then I'm going to sell those instruments to my corporation. Sorry, I had something that fell and I got to go find out what it is because I don't remember. Oh, I know what it is. It's my Reese's Puffs. My Reese's Puffs. Yes, I've been eating Reese's Puffs. They're not the greatest things. There's a lot of sugar in Reese's Puffs, but it's a snack for me because I don't eat it all the time. I don't do cereal, but I ate cereal this week and last week. And then it'll be months before I eat cereal again. We'll talk about all that later because it has nothing to do with knowledge. See, that's just information right there about cereal and Reese's Puffs. There, there's no knowledge about that junk. That's just information. Understand, there's a difference between information and knowledge. But let's get back to the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, I can now, with the information in those two videos, create instruments and take the credits that I have acquired just by documenting debts that are owed to me by other people. And then I can take that information that I learned from those videos and the videos prior, and I can go out there and create, create, pay attention, create deductions. How do you get to create deductions? By simply recording debts, by simply changing the terms of agreements by sending the party a notice of change in terms of agreement via a contract with an arbitration clause. And once I do that, I have documented that there is a prior agreement between the parties and that I gave them a notice of change in terms and I gave them reasonable conditions and if they didn't respond and didn't provide the information which they were required to do, then they're bound by the terms of the agreement. Just that simple. And once they're bound by the terms of the agreement, I just default them. It's the administrative process. If all of you who ever understood about the, what did they call it, the commercial lien process? Well, this is the process of the commercial lien process just with a twist of arbitration. And once that happens, now I have credits. But I can create the deductions also another way, recognizing that there are certain agencies that are indebted to me, certain agencies that did me wrong, notifying them of the wrong that they did, and giving them a fee schedule. No, 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 a reasonable fee schedule, not telling them you owe me trillions of dollars. No, 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 no. <sighs> Can't do it that way. You have to be reasonable. Now, somebody, I was talking to an idiot the other day. He works for a company called Progressive. And I said, I'm just being reasonable. The law requires that I be reasonable. He says, reasonable? He says, that's a legal term. I said, you better believe it. I said, because that's all I do is law. My language is nothing but repeating law. I said, and so my job is to document that I was reasonable with you because they were refusing to do something in regards to a claim. And he was unreasonable. He refused to continue the conversation. And so I, I went and spoke with a supervisor. Supervisor says they're going to get back with me this week, but now I'm going to corporate. They want to play games with me. Okay, fine. I don't mind creating... Oh, everybody receives my disclaimer under my emails and so forth, so they all receive that disclaimer, and nobody has ever opted out of it. Now, some of the people who contact me via SACOM and everything, they always say, oh, I opt out of the agreement. They don't understand. The agreement is not like that. Plus, anybody who gets services with any of the corporations I form, they can't opt out of the agreement because they're the ones who initiated the agreement, and the way the contract is written, they can't change the terms of the agreement. Yeah, we, we've already thought about all that, but they don't have to worry because it's not that type of contract. We're not trying to bind our people. 
We're not trying to bind our clients. That's that's not what that's about. That's just to make sure that everybody's protected. They from us and us from them, because we are not here to take advantage of any of our clients. That's not how I work, and I will never work that way. Okay, once I told everybody, hey, I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I used his name. <sighs> now, it's not a burden because I used his name, but because I used his name, I now have to bring honor to that name. I cannot dishonor him. I don't have that authority. And I will never take that authority upon myself. Some of you will understand. Some of you won't get it because you have so much information about God and who he is and who he isn't, but you don't have any knowledge of who he is and who he isn't. Don't worry about it. Uh -uh, don't take offense. See, that's the other thing. When you take offense to something someone says, that shows ignorance. Don't take offense because then you show your ignorance. How can you take offense to a word? How can you take offense to a set of words? How can you take offense to something someone says? Those are words. Words are just, pay attention. Just think about it just for a second. Words are just words. Words have no substance. They're just words. Words only have substance when they are applied. Now, the practical application of knowledge, that's called wisdom. That's when you apply knowledge practically. That's wisdom. Wisdom doesn't come with age because a lot of old fools don't know how to apply the knowledge they have. So now you get the context of this particular recording. Knowledge, when it is applied, shows wisdom. But uh -uh, knowledge, when it is applied practically. So that's why for two years straight, pay attention, for two years straight, I have been providing you, and pay attention, two years straight, exactly what I promise, the information you need to take care of all of your debts. Gave you information that nobody else was talking about. Very few people are talking about it even now because they don't get it. Some people have attempted to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you did an arbitration, you got an arbitration award, all you have to do is do your 1099A and 1099C. Whatever the award amount was, those are your tax credits. Use that, create a bond, and back it up. But go watch the last two videos on this subject and Ask Kev series, and you'll get the understanding. What two videos? These two videos right here. Ask Kev series. How to document tax credits to receive a refund sole proprietor and nonprofit that's part 1 this is part 2 two videos ladies and gentlemen on the redress right channel because all videos for the time being will be done on that channel now back to the hotel if as it were back to knowledge again not information Anybody can give you information. And most of the videos you watch from people who are talking about this subject and that subject, if they're giving you their opinion, that's not knowledge. That's information. It's called their opinion. Their opinion is worth less and less. Why? Because it's not supported by anything. It's just their opinion. I've seen a couple of videos lately where the person says, this is what I think. Excuse me? This is what I think. What the? Who cares about what you think? I don't care what you think. What you think, man, who made you God so that what you think is something I need to be concerned about? That's why I'll tell you, if you hear me say, this is my opinion, I'll always highlight it and say, this is my opinion. That's letting you know that that's what I think. That's not for you to rely on. That's what I think. That's not for you to say, hey, man, he told me what he thought. And, man, 
I'm staking my life on what he thought. Forget me. I, I, man, don't you dare. You need knowledge. You don't need opinions. Turn on the news. They'll give you opinions all day long. Listen to a politician. He'll give you an opinion all day long. Go to YouTube. People will give you opinions all day long. However, the people who are trying to impart knowledge, they're going to show you where they're getting this stuff from. They're not just going to just tell you this is what happened and this is how it happened and this is why it happens. The moment somebody is just telling you something, even though you think you know the truth about it, uh -uh, do not do that. That's not knowledge. That's just somebody giving information. Information is subjective. It always has two sides because information is like telling a story. And there is always at least two sides to every informational story that somebody gives you. Let's do this. I want to show you what I'm talking about. We're only going to talk about this, this section and one more scripture to get a point across. But this is Hebrews, the fifth chapter, verse 11. And this is Paul speaking to the Hebrew congregation. And he says, we have much to say about him. Who is to him? Well, he's talking about Jesus Christ, who came in the manner of Melchizedek, who was God's high priest. And Jesus is now God's high priest. But hold on. In order for Jesus to be God's high priest, he couldn't be God. Go look at what a high priest does. So we did a video the other day and uh, talking to people, asking if Jesus was God, then how could he get baptized? Well, if Jesus is God, then how could he be God's high priest? Go and look at what a high priest does. Well, Paul talks about it in the fifth chapter, but we're not here to talk about that. I'm just giving you the context of where this is coming from. He says, but we have much to say about him, and it is difficult to explain. Why? Because not everybody can accept the knowledge. Because you have become dull in your hearing. See, a lot of people don't know how to hear. They know how to listen but they don't know how to listen see for although by now you should be teachers every one of you who listen to my videos should be able to teach the information to somebody show them where you're getting the information from but you again need someone to teach you from the beginning the elementary things i i don't know i mean i just need some help i mean i've listened to the video over and over again but i'm still not understanding of the sacred pronouncements of God. It says, you have gone back to needing milk, not solid food. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't give you the watered down version of information. I can't give you the watered down version of knowledge. I just don't have that in me. I don't know how to break it down to as fine as participle. Okay? I, I don't have that capability, but what I can do is tell you this for everyone who continues to feed on milk is unacquainted with the word of righteousness for he is a young child children need milk it makes the body grow big and strong children need milk but solid food belongs to mature not chore mature people Solid food belongs to mature people. Those who through use of the knowledge have their powers of discernment trained. Knowledge is power to distinguish both right and wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, you can distinguish with the information once you see it, whether it's correct or incorrect. Why? Because it's written in the stars. It's right there in front of you. Now, do you remember when everybody was talking about this great awakening? They talked about the enlightenment and all of that. Ladies and gentlemen, many of those people didn't even understand what they were talking about. They didn't even know where it came from when they were talking about this great awakening. Sorry, I wasn't trying to get to that part of Daniel. I got to go all the way to the 12th chapter of Daniel. Uh-oh. Sorry, Hosea. This is the 12th chapter. And in the 12th chapter of Daniel, this is what was said. As for you, Daniel, keep the words secret and seal up the book 
until the time of the end, our time, the time in which we live. Many will rove about, and many are still roving about. And another word for meaning for roving about, let's click on the star. Roving about. Examine it, that is, the book, thoroughly. And not just the book of Daniel, but the scriptures themselves. Many will rove about, and true knowledge will become abundant. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that there was true knowledge? Now let's go, we're going to go to the, the King James Version because it's necessary that we go to the King James Version as well because most people read the book of Daniel from that version of the Bible. So let's take a look at the King James Version. Yes, 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 this particular software has the King James Version embedded in it as well and Rotterham and a couple other versions you uh, can download with the program. But verse number four, uh-oh, it went to Hosea, I apologize. I, I don't know why I want to go to Hosea so much. But thou, but you, O Daniel, shut up the words. Oh, shut up! And seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many will run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. They called it the Great Enlightenment. Have you heard so many people talking about the Great Enlightenment? Well, this is what they are talking about. Ladies and gentlemen. This is what they're talking about. Knowledge and power. There are a lot of people who think that they are dumb. Not because they are dumb, but because society has led them into believing that they are dumb. Nobody's ever proved that they are dumb. Pay attention. But they have been led to believe that they are dumb. What are you talking about, Willis? <sighs> Most people don't realize that they have the same brain as everyone else. Even an autistic person has the same brain. A uh, savant has the same brain as everyone else. Look, there are some savants who <laughs> will make you look like you're the dumbest person in the universe because they know how to use a portion of their brain that you have not learned to gain access to. Can you fully gain access to your brain and all of its aspects and what it's capable of? Of course not. If you could, you would be creating rocket ships and going to the moon. See, let's do Elon Musk just for a second. I mean, because he, he's the poster boy for being picked on these days. Elon Musk has a plan of going to Mars. But what he can't do on Mars is they can't go to Mars to live. It's not possible. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they can produce a uh, little tubercles and things like that to house in and go probably even underground and build underground and create their own system of oxygen and nobody's thought about that yet and they should have been thinking about that if you're going to go to a place like mars if it were possible to get there with all that radiation coming from the sun which is harmful for humans see we think of radiation as being negative 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 and wrong radiation is necessary in our universe go ahead and do your research on it that's not me just giving you information. That's me giving you a little bit of knowledge. Radiation is necessary in the universe. It's just we can't handle the radiation. And we don't have the equipment to protect us from that much radiation at one time. Now, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. We can handle radiation because there's radiation everywhere. Go ahead. You've heard of radiation waves, radio waves? That's radiation. Your cell phone gives out radiation. Microwaves give out radiation. Radiation is all around you, people. But pay attention. In space, without something to shield you, it's a microwave. And it's like you putting a hot dog in a microwave and turning it all the way on high and leaving it on high for over 8, 12, 15 hours. That's radiation, people. We can't handle that type of radiation. That's too much. Okay? That radiation we can't handle. That radiation is too much. 
It's too much. So if Elon Musk was going to go to the moon, if they were to think about building underground, and we don't know what's underground, we don't know what lies under that ground, we don't know what effect being underground will have on them. Now remember, they still will need sunlight because humans need sunlight. That was one of those things that they were made dependent on. They need sunlight, so they can't be underground forever. But if they go to Mars, they will not be able to pay attention. They will not be able to create an atmosphere. Now, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I heard Elon Musk say that they were thinking about exploding nuclear weapons in the atmosphere to create an atmosphere. So they're going to use radiation, nuclear radiation, to create an atmosphere on Mars. Come on now. How long you think that will take for it to be inhabited? Hmm? How many decades, centuries, millennia you think it will take for Mars if they were to create its own atmosphere for a planet that size? Remember, they can create little habitats where a couple of 15, maybe 20 people can live and they can produce oxygen in these habitats. And they will have to have several backup systems because if one breaks down, where they're going to get the parts to create new parts, okay? Oh no, we'll just get a shipment from UPS from the the you know the Universal Parcel Service that goes through space, and they'll deliver it from Earth to Mars, and so we'll have it in in in. Oh, don't know how long it's going to take on Earth. It will be three days, but I, I don't know if they they could get the three day delivery from Earth to Mars. That's the difference. Going to Mars is speculation. It's not a reality. There is no knowledge behind that. Now, there's knowledge about the science dealing with Mars and what the planet has to offer and the natural resources and everything and man wanting to go to Mars. But instead of man trying to figure out how to go to another planet, why don't they take care of the planet that they were given? Instead of man trying to go to the moon, why don't they improve on the planet that they were given? See, as I told people, opinion, this is my opinion. We keep hearing scientists say, man made global warming. Nobody's paid attention to that statement. Man made global warming. Go ahead. Man made global warming. You hear it all the time. Man made global warming. Hold on. We're going to go to the internet and we're going to type it in. Man-made global warming. Stop listening. Okay. <laughs> I want y'all to pay attention. This is the phrase. I didn't make this phrase up, but no, I've never looked it up before. It says man-made global warming. Okay. No, pay attention. Man-made global warming. Global warming is not a fact. Man has done so many things to cause global warming. The nanoparticles that they put in the atmosphere, man-made. Man-made global warming. They even came up with the idea. The idea came about because of man. Man created the doctrine of global warming. So man made global warming. Global warming doesn't exist without man creating the doctrine. Man made global warming. They told us from the very beginning, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. They're saying man made global warming. They're not saying man made climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, the climate changes every single day, four times a year. Do you guys realize the climate changes Four times a year, winter, spring, summer, a fall. All you got to do is call, and I'll be there. Yes, I will. You got a friend. Climate changes all the time. Climate changes with a storm system. Climate changes with an earthquake. Climate changes 
when you take your pay attention foot and you step on the soil, you change the climate for that area. These are all just phrases, people. This is not knowledge. This is information. And it can be used either way. Do you see how I said evidence of man that he made global warming? It's gold standard. Really? Well, this is not knowledge. This is just information where somebody is giving you information on one subject going in one direction because they chose the subject matter. They're not just telling you, uh oh, there are 10 myths about climate change because man may, 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 may warming or climate change on earth ladies and gentlemen man are putting nanoparticles hold on n a n o p a r t man made global warming nanoparticles let's find out about these nanoparticles now we got to get past the ad. See, ad, ad, ad. Uh -uh. That means that that's not knowledge. That's just information. We don't want their information. Okay. Ah, evaluation temperatures. The combination of climate change effects and further exasperation of anthropological. Anthropogenic, pogenic, I don't know that word, y'all. Anthropogenic activities will greatly impact both the biosphere and mankind. I'm going to get uh, Kevin to talk about this because I need to know how this subject could go. Oh, now we're going to get some knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. How does this process combat global warming and climate change? Ladies and gentlemen, they want us to think that because you drive a vehicle and they're produ producing all this pollution into the atmosphere, that that's what's causing the problem. No. The problem with this so-called global warming is that they are putting particles in the atmosphere to keep the greenhouse gases in. Go ahead. They've been doing it for decades. I remember when I was a kid talking about how they were putting these particles in the atmosphere to reflect the sun's rays. <laughs> you know what? We believe that bull. We believe that junk that they were putting junk in the air to reflect the sun's rays. Lord have mercy. Who gave them the right to do that, ladies and gentlemen, to make a decision for the entire planet? Because that's exactly what they did. They said that they were putting these particles in our atmosphere to reflect the sun's rays. Who told them that was okay? This one doesn't talk, by the way. Who told them that was okay? I didn't. He says, yes, that's correct. Climate change caused by the accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is already having a significant effect on human society. The impacts of climate change, including rising temperatures, changes in the precipitation patterns, more frequent and severe weather events such as hurricanes and droughts, melting glaciers and sea ice, and the rising levels of the sea. These changes are having a profound effect on the biosphere, including changes in the ecosystem biodiversity loss, and extinction of species. Climate change is also affecting the human societies. The impact on food scarcity or security, water sources, health, and economic systems, atmospheric activities such as the deforestation, land use changes, and the burning of fossil fuels are further exasperating the impacts of climate change. These activities are releasing additional greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, further contributing to global warming and associated impacts, reducing greenhouse gases. Now, I'm going to stop him right here. Oh, I hit the wrong button. I'm going to stop him. 
because he was already finished and I hit the button and I wasn't supposed to be doing that. So I'm going to stop him. What about the nanoparticles such as nanoaluminum that man is putting into the atmosphere? Comma, isn't that having an effect on the impact of the so-called global warming? Question mark. Stop listening. Now, I'm not going to ask any more questions. I just want to talk about that because, see, this is the knowledge portion. See, what he gave us was information, but now I asked him a specific question. Now he's going to take care of the knowledge. The idea that nanoparticles, now he says the idea that nanoparticles such as nanoaluminum is being intentionally released into the atmosphere to mitigate the effects of climate change is controversial and unproven theory. Nope, we, we got to go here. Ooh-wee, because nobody said anything about chemtrails. I wasn't talking about that. Are you? Are you stating that man is not putting nanoparticles such as nanoaluminum in the atmosphere intentionally? Comma, what about the scientists who did the many news interviews saying that this was exactly what they were doing? Question mark. How dare you speak about it being an idea? when they said they were actually doing it, period. And no one said anything about chemtrails. I asked about nanoaluminum, comma. Aluminum, comma, and the effects such is having on the atmosphere. I want the facts. I don't want your opinion or your commentary, comma, you will answer the question as directed and you will not elaborate with your opinion or with someone else's opinion. Is that understood? This will be the last question I ask him. I don't have time for him today. I have work to do, and so I'm going to get to that work. But I wanted to take the time to give you guys, to answer your question directly, the intentional release of nanoparticles such as nanoaluminum to the atmosphere for the purpose of mitigating the effects of climate change is not widely accepted or a scientifically proven method. While these may be, there may be individuals and organizations that claim to be doing so, there is not enough scientific evidence to support the effectiveness and safety of such method. Many experts are concerned about the potential negative impacts on human health and the environment. As a language model, I don't care what you are providing. I didn't ask him for that. So I don't want his opinion or commentary. And so I want him to give me the facts. So watch this. Let me, let's do this. Now watch what I do. We're going to do that right there. Now what I did is I said scientists discover that there is intentional releasing of nanoparticles into our atmosphere. And I do that first. Then I talk about the interviews because, see, I remember watching the news and then talking about this is what they were doing. That was in the 80s, people. Okay? 
that was in the 80s that they said they were doing that. Okay, uh, toxicity, environmental risk of nanomaterials, challenges, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, geoengineering, and that's what it was called. That's what it was called, geoengineering. Lord have mercy. To reduce the amount of carbons released into the atmosphere, these demonstrated technologies allow us to combat climate change. This was 2010. Okay? Nanoparticles in the environment assessment of using blah, blah, blah. And uh, nanoparticles cause concern for health and safety. I don't ask about that. I don't care about that. I just want to know, again, watch this. Such as nano uh, being intentionally released into the atmosphere to mitigate the effects of climate change scientists discover. Watch this. As discussed in a national interview. Now, I just said national interview, and that's all I put in there because I want the actual interview. Okay. In geoengineering parts one, two, and three, hearing committee on. So, why are they having a hearing committee? The national security and geopolitical impacts of climate change to reduce the amounts of carbon released into the atmosphere. I don't care about that. I care about the geoengineering part. Okay. Chemtrails. Don't care about conspiracies. The effects of nanoparticles in the environment and outdoor, the assessment of nanoparticles, environment. I'm looking for the geoengineering. Okay. Uh, let's do one more. And this is the last one, because this ain't a subject I was supposed to be staying on. Scientists utilize geoengineering in an effort to deflect the sun's rays and heat. comma, reported in the scientific journal. I don't know if it's reported in the scientific journal. I just know that I saw the report several times, not just once, several times. Dimming the sun to clue the planet is a desperate idea, okay? Scientists who study solar geoengineering don't want anyone and then it says uh, stratosphere in order to affect, ladies and gentlemen, they released a nuclear bomb in the stratosphere. Twice, three times, five times, a nuclear bomb in the upper atmosphere. Okay. Reversing climate change with geoengineering. Scientists keep talking about this and have been doing it. See, untested tech, not part of climate fix guidance. They did it without telling you people. Okay? Seeks better understand the efficiency and risk of solar geoengineering. The solution to the climate crisis. Then they want to mine the moon. 20 reasons why geoengineering may be a bad idea for carbon dioxide, geoengineering, cli the climate, scientists, governance. They exploded those nuclear weapons in the stratosphere, people. Did they come to you and ask you for permission? Did they come to you and ask you for permission? When they exploded nuclear weapons, in the atmosphere. Hold on. Several governments explode nuclear weapons in the upper atmosphere. Comma. The long-lasting effects. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what effects 
nuclear radiation has on the human body? Well, they exploded this in the atmosphere, so that means we're all breathing it in. Where do you think acid rain comes from? It doesn't come from just the simple carbon emissions. Okay, but these idiots exploded the humanitarian. No, I don't want the impacts. I want the. I want the nuclear weapons being exploded in the atmosphere, and so this examining the consequences. Okay, but I got to do this in Google because this is goodbye rule. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. I said several governments, and that's exactly what I should have said. Copy, and now we got to go to Google. G O O G. Search with Google. I want to search with Google, mommy. And here we go. Then we're going to go back to what we were talking about. I didn't expect this to go for an hour, but see, that's the thing. Uh oh. I don't want to go here. This is a what this is a what if question. So this is not knowledge. This is just information. Long term effects. In the long term, nuclear weapons produce blah blah blah. So we don't care about that. Okay, I want let's do that. Let's do see I put governments explode. So we're gonna put US. And let's see, radioactive fallout of nuclear weapons testing in the U.S. It says, detonating nuclear weapons above ground sends radioactive material as high as 50 miles into the atmosphere. Large particles fall onto the ground near blah, blah, blah. Atomic bomb tests that damage the upper atmosphere. This is 2020, they reported this, but this happened in the 30, late 30s, early 40s, and 50s. They didn't do it just once. They didn't do it just twice. Why do you think we have holes in the ozone layer above the areas where they set off the nuclear bombs in space? Why the U.S. once set off nuclear bombs in space? This is National Geographic talking about it. Man-made global warming. Ladies and gentlemen, they've been telling you this for the whole time. Now do you see the difference between information and knowledge? Like I said, I'm showing you the information. Nobody came to me and told me this. I, I watched the reports, and they said it nonchalantly, but did they ask you for your input? Did they ask your grandmother, your grandfathers, your uncles, your, your, your nephews, your nieces? Did they ask any of you, hey, do you think it's a good idea that we explode nuclear bombs in the upper atmosphere above Arizona and above California? Well, we have those nuclear testing bases. That's why the ozone layer has such a big hole above that. China did the same thing. They tested their weapons. North Korea is testing its nuclear weapons. They're testing nuclear weapons, people. That means radiation. That's what they're doing to us. But nobody's talking about it because everybody's distracted by information. Why the U.S. once set off a nuclear bomb? See, it says a nuclear bomb in space. Uh-uh. Do not think that it was just one. Ooh-wee. If you think that they, oh, we're going to do it just one time? Hey, Bob. Okay, yeah, this is going to be one time. So we ain't going to ever do it again, okay? Because we learned our lesson without ever having to learn a lesson. So we're just going to do it one time. We're not going to give ourselves permission to do it again. So you're going to put that in writing? All right. All right, let's go ahead. All right, uh, launch it. Oh, no, we don't have no press here. Ain't no reason for the press to know about this. All right, go ahead and launch it. Oh, yeah, about 50 years or so, we'll tell the people. So go ahead and launch it. Come on, what y'all waiting on? That's what they did, ladies and gentlemen. And then they did it again. And then they did it again, 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 and then they did it again. We don't know how many times they've done it. But you know, as your mama used to tell you, if you did it once, you're going to do it again. You know your mamas used to tell you all that? What's What made them stop at one? Where's the policy? Where's the rule? 
I don't want you. Oh, this is that type of site. This is National Ge Geographic. They, okay. Let's see. WWPNG at G-M-I-A-L dot C-O-M. I, I, I spelled Gmail backwards on purpose because there might be a person whose email is that way. Ah. Okay. Let's do this. I don't know who got Eon and IML. Yeah, three free articles left. Subscribe. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, get out of here. Nobody asked for you. He was trying to figure out which direction to look. He thought that he was going to be just a little flicker. So he wanted to make sure everybody was going to see it. Excuse me? Watch the bomb parties. Excuse me? Watch the bomb parties. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Parties. Not party. Parties. It turned out that the blast, a 1.4 magnitude, magnitude bomb, 500 times as powerful as the one that fell on Hiroshima, was not subtle. That's right. It tore holes in the atmosphere. Nuclear test in space. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what they did. When a nuclear weapon went off, the whole sky was lit up in every direction. It looked like noon, says Spriggs. But why would they do that? And then why would they blame it all on you, saying that it was your carbon emissions that was causing this? Why would they do that? And why would all of you believe that? I told you we were going to learn something. So global warming is man-made, ladies and gentlemen. It is intentional. Man did this on purpose. Pay attention. Man did this on purpose. And now they're claiming that if we don't reverse climate change, the world blah, 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 blah. Do not believe that. The cycles the planet is going in now appear to be normal. Now, I'm not saying that they are. I'm not an anti-global warmist. Please understand that. I'm not saying that they are. I said it appears to be normal. Because here it is, California, the land of the drought. We know that they do geoengineering. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I just showed you about this stupid system. But let's find out about, uh-oh, we went to a dark screen. I don't know how that happened. Let's see. G E O. Okay, we get geoengineering. Watch this. H A R R P. I don't know if that's how they spell their harp, but that's how we're going to spell our harp. Oh, you don't want to change it? Then we're going to leave it the way it is. It's A A R P. Okay? Harp is the world's most capable high powered high frequency transmitter radiation study of the ionosphere harp program is committed to developing blah 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 the university of alaska system false claims severe weather linked to chemtrails we don't care about usa today that's just information ladies and gentlemen but geoengineering research and some of the work scientists at the National Center, this is what they're doing, ladies and gentlemen. They are doing this. It is man-made. They told you, man-made global warming. They created the term. They created the term. They created the term. Conspiracy theories around U.S. military closes heart. U.S. military hasn't closed heart. What they did is they switched it to Puerto Rico, but once that dish fell, 
We don't know because it's Artisibo, Puerto Rico that it was switched to. Okay? U.S. developed weapon systems may cause global warming. What? U.S. developed weapon systems may cause global warming. Say what? U.S. developed weapon systems may cause man-made global warming. Oh, no! And they're talking about heart. Then you have it here. Now, this one is the India Times. What do they know? I don't know. What do they know? Does anybody know what they know? Then we go, let's see. I need something else. The Guardian, the CIA weaponized the weather. Can the CIA weaponize the weather? You see how they turned it into a question? I don't want that one. What I want. That's a dot org. That's a dot com. There was one about dot gov up there, so watch out for this conspiracy theory on climate change. Really? It's a conspiracy theory? Okay. Comtrails, conspiracy theories. People who think, and this is the BBC, people who think. Ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and unthink it because we don't want information, we want facts. This is the University of Alaska. HARP is the world's most capable, high-powered, high-frequency transmitter for the study of the ionosphere. Well, if they're just studying the ionosphere, why do they need to be the most powerful? Why do they need to be capable of high power? Why do they need power to study the atmosphere? They just told you that they have the world's most high-powered, high-frequency transmitter to study, to study. Really, just to study? You need that type of power? I thought you just needed a nightlight because your roommate is asleep. So you don't want to keep your roommate up. So why do you need to have the entire city's power grid give you light in that room? Your roommate's not going to be able to sleep. I mean, they, they said it was a study. Lord have mercy. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to click here. This is a government, governmentinfo.gov website. The Committee on Science and Technology, House of Representatives, 111th Congress. I didn't make this up, ladies and gentlemen. They're having a hearing. Why is Congress having a hearing on a, a conspiracy theory? Wait, 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 wait. Let's do this. Got that right there. And we're going to do the capitals. H-A-A-R-P. Now, it says it ain't got harp in there. So let's do G-E-O. G-E-O. Yo, we'll just do geo. Geoengineering. Well, look at that. Look at that. Even the government admits it. Why would they admit it? So we're going to, because it doesn't have, it has a hyphen and it doesn't have a hyphen. We're just going to leave it that way. And we're just going to go through and we're going to see where they talk about the word geoengineering because I was interested. Geoengineering, geoengineering report working group. Uh-oh. Geoengineering project. Look, ladies and gentlemen, geoengineering project. But I thought those were theories. This is a government website that says this is exactly what they're doing. Geoengineering and climate simulations. What? Simulations. Climate simulations. Uh-oh. A potential role for NASA. What? Prioritizing geoengineering strategies. I didn't make this up, people. Geoengineering 2, scientific basis and engineering challenges. 2010, people. Geoengineering 2. No, we got that one out of the way. Report working group. Uh-oh, they're already working on it. And let's continue. And we come to this geoengineering, Columbia University. Whoa, they've been doing a whole lot of studying, huh? Economic cost of geoengineering. And let's continue. They're just having these committees for nothing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, carbon uptake. Chemical and carbon uptake. And they said that 
people invented chemtrails. Carbon uptake. Th those are chemtrails, people. Sorry. It says chemicals and then carbon uptake. And let's continue. Geoengineering 3. Domestic and international research governance. International research? What does the United States have to do with geoengineering international research? The future of geo geoengineering research in the UK. Why is the United States studying geoengineering for the UK? Public opinion of geoengineering. And let's see, the prospects of unilateral geoengineering. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand what unilateral is? That means where they make the decision without anyone else's input. So if the United States did it, what about the other countries? If the United States did it, what about the other 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 other, other countries? So this is to let you know this is not a theory. That is to let you know that it's not a theory. People want us to believe. If you only believe that it's a theory. That is just some idea a group of people had who don't know what they're talking about because they they crazy. They conspiracy theorists. Well, as you can see, now you have knowledge of the fact that it has nothing to do with theories or conspiracies. It has everything to do with the government says this is what they're doing. The government are the ones who said they exploded bombs in the upper atmosphere. Remember the articles that literally said that those were theories? That some people believe it? Oh, wait, 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 hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I'm working on another computer in the background. I'm, I'm multitasking. We weren't designed to multitask. I've always said that. But I'm multitasking because the other computer is on. But I need to do something. Hooey. Uh, give me one second. I got to go back to the one that talked about the exploding of those bombs in the upper atmosphere. Okay, I got to go back to this one. Because that idiot told me that this was a theory. Give me one second. Give me one second. Don't want all of that. Uh, nope. This may not be the one I clicked on earlier because I don't see the quotations. See, this is just saying both nuclear and conventional weapons produce a destructive. I don't want this article. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong article, so y'all give me a second. I need... That's the... Did atomic bomb tests damage our upper atmosphere? See, they asked, did it? Okay. And, <laughs> Ooh -wee. and I can't use this article because he'll give it to me alone because he has this article in his system. Radio communication. So, and you guys don't really understand. That's why you lose signals all the time. So, no, I need the atomic bomb test. I need the... Uh, no, I need the upper atmosphere. So, oh, that was the National Geographic. Sorry, that's who that was. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's this one right here. No, I don't want humanitarian. I just want National Geographic. All right? So get on out of the way, the rest of y'all. Move! Get out the way! Get out the way! Get out the way, y'all. No, I don't want that. Uh, Hold on. Wake up. Huh? 
How dare you lie to me and say it was just a theory, comma, and there was no proof that the government participates in geoengineering. Comma, what about Stop listening. <laughs> Let's see what he says. Y'all don't mind? Uh-oh, he's writing. I apologize for the previous response. I would like to clarify my previous response was not intended to mislead or misrepresent the existence of the particular scientific theory or practice. However, as an AI model, I strive to blah, 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 blah. While there may be alternative viewpoints and belief, it is important to rely on credible sources and peer review research. No, it ain't. Uh uh. You ain't doing that to me. You're going to give me the information without all of that junk. A peer review? Why would I rely on peer review? That ain't got nothing to do with me. I rely on the facts, not subjections, not conjecture, but the facts. Okay, now you see how he's going slower? Because this is now being controlled as far as the answer. Ah, uh, I do not lie or, and I always strive, whatever. Ah, scientific evidence and expert opinions. To clarify, while there are some individuals and organizations that Propose the use of geoengineering techniques, such as intentionally releasing nanoparticles into the atmosphere. These methods are not yet widely accepted or scientifically proven to be effective. Okay, I'm going to let him continue, but that's the end of this, ladies and gentlemen. What I wanted to do was let you know that at least when you come to my channel i'm going to show you something either you knew or you didn't know but you will learn something and please understand for the state of california the area where i live we were freezing cold yesterday and the day before and the day before that and the day before that and the day before that i almost turned on the heater this morning i don't have to turn on the heater ladies and gentlemen we've gotten 16 inches of rain our normal rainfall is four inches of rain a year. We have gotten four times the amount of rain we normally get. 16 inches of rain. You all have no idea. 16 inches of rain. You have no idea. But they say it's global warming. No. You can see the jet stream changed. This is the weather pattern we used to have in the 80s and the 70s. California, all of California is not a desert. California is 900 miles long, 400 miles across. California is not a desert, people. Well, there's Death Valley. Yeah, Death Valley only because we diverted the waters. That's why it's called Death Valley, because we keep diverting the waters. But you know about Saudi Arabia? Any of y'all done any research on Saudi Arabia, how it's a big, huge desert, most of it? Well, go ahead and look at all of the water aquifers under the ground. Just go to YouTube and do Saudi Arabia's water, water aquifers. And you'll see that not only is Saudi Arabia using that water now by tapping into that ground and tapping into that water supply, and they are creating fertile land in the desert. China is doing the exact same thing. These places are not deserts in that sense. When they talk about the deserts in Africa expanding and expanding, ladies and gentlemen, the continent of Africa and the deserts expanding and expanding, that's because they restrict the geoengineering. Look, I got to take this call, so we'll finish this at another time, okay?